Hello, thank you, Robin, and thank you, VISTA members, on your third day of service, and thank you for joining us today on Navigating Your Year of Service. So before we get started, we want to review a quick thing um, about our webinar environment. Uh, we went through it on Monday, but we want to make sure you get the most out of this session, so let's quickly review. The audio for this webinar is being broadcast by phone and online. Uh, live closed captions of the audio can be viewed in the media viewer panel. We have the phone lines muted to reduce background noise. If you would like to share a comment or a response to a question, use the chat panel and send to all participants. If you have a question, please use the Q&A panel. We will monitor those questions that come into the Q&A panel um, and get them at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and the resources we mentioned will be available along with the recording on the VISTA webinars page of the VISTA campus. And we'll send you the, a link to those files once um, they're posted. So we're going to begin in just a moment. All righty, welcome back as I said before and welcome to Navigating Your Year of Service. Um, I'm Jessica Birch. And I'm Ann Oti at AmeriCorps VISTA in Washington, D.C., and we'll be your hosts for today. Um, we have a little bit of snow here, but Anne, are you staying real warm here? Nice and toasty. Nice and toasty. I know that there's probably some other VISTAs on the phone right now um, who maybe got some snow. Maybe you're living in some 80-degree sunshine. I'm looking at you, Hawaii. Um, so you know where we are, but we want to know where you are. So um, using the annotation tools on the upper left side of your screen, Click on the one that looks like an arrow on the far left and use it to point to where you're serving. So let's see, I'm gonna to try to test this out. You guys are pretty quick though. So whoop, see there's Jessica. It looks like Linnea or Linnea is serving in Nevada. Or Nevada, I never know which is the proper way. I think it's Nevada. Let's take a look here. And there's, there's, we're seeing people pop in. Look, yeah. we got Uday or Uday. Told you Hawaii, it's some nice weather out there. I'm very jealous. <laughs> Uh, we also have Yoselin, who is in Florida. Another nice weather. Not a lot of people in like the, the center of the United States here. We got a lot of people in, um, in the East Coast. We got Carrie there, who's serving in Alaska. Caroline, I see you up north. I see, yeah, she's like at the furthest up north. She's basically in Canada. Yep, almost. <laughs> I wonder if people in that area of Canada are like, you're basically in like the U.S. I wonder. I wonder. Um, but yeah, I've never seen like this discrepancy here. Like really no one's right in the middle. Taylor, Taylor's getting us closer to the middle. Uh, look, she's like blinking her thing or he, I'm sorry, he or she, I don't know. Um, I'm in the middle. But it's great. Samantha there, you're in Colorado, wonderful. So it's really interesting to see, you know, we're all in this webinar, there's about 120 of us here. Just where all of you are serving. Some people may be really close to you. Um, a lot of those people in the East Coast, maybe you're serving right next door to someone else. Um, for those of you, Carrie, Carrie in Alaska, Carrie, you're all by yourself on this webinar. That's okay. I was a VISTA in Alaska, and I served in the town, and I was the only VISTA there, so um, I feel you. Um, but you're in Alaska, so that's a great thing. Um, but it's great to be able to see where everyone's at and just kind of understand where people are who are near you and ways that they can help you throughout your VISTA service. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about other ways to connect here in a second um, on the VISTA campus. But before we go ahead and do that, um, as I mentioned, we are on your third day of service as a VISTA member. You showed up here. Woohoo! It's going well so far, we hope. Uh, and we expect that you're participating in that on-site orientation and training at your project site uh, during those first few weeks. So let's get started by having you answer this poll question as it appears on your screen. What benefits do you want to learn more about? Choose all that apply. Healthcare, do I need to have health insurance? What kinds of things I can get reimbursed for? Living allowance, how much am I getting paid? When is my first living allowance payment? The education award, how long do I have to use it? How can I use it? Loan forbearance and deferment, what the difference is and which is a better option for you or other, post it in the chat panel. That's right. Um, I'm going to ask um, our partners here at Education Northwest who are helping us to, um, to do this webinar here. Yep. I love it. Someone said I Heart Vista. I love it. Thank you, Joanne, for clearing out those, uh, those tags. I do love the I Love Vista. Very creative. Love it. 
Um, so yeah, so as Ann mentioned, what, um, what's on your mind? What do you have questions about? Um, it looks like we also have some coming in over the, um, over the chat panel, so people have questions about days off um, and child care. Looks like Dana has a question about rent subsidy. Um, so let's see. So as this poll goes, it looks like it is going to end here in just a second. So make sure you put in your answers. And which one do you think is going to be like the most popular? Um, I think education award and maybe living allowance. Okay. What about you? Man, I think the living allowance, because I mean, everyone wants to know when they're going to get paid, but I also think healthcare is a big topic. I think people always have questions about healthcare. So it looks like the poll may have just closed, so we're waiting to get those back. I love it. Leah, she said healthcare, so maybe Leah's going to push me over the edge and I'm going to win. Yeah. Maybe. We'll Leah, see. I hope you did it for me. I hope you cinched it and clinched it, I guess, not cinched it. That's like a <laughs> cinching of the waist. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so what does those poll results Okay. Boom, and I win. It's healthcare. Um, healthcare. But if you add up living allowance and education award, you do beat me. That is true. Oh, man. So those are a lot of questions. We know that those are generally the main topics that people have questions about. And during the session, we're going to provide you with the information to learn more about your needs, such as healthcare, your living allowance, and so on. Um, this session will help guide you to find those answers and give you the tools um, to find out what, uh, what's best for you. So that's like with regard to healthcare, the education, or what really is the best option for you. Um, like I said, this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted for you to view later on. But you may want to take notes um, throughout this session um, just to kind of get um, maybe some of those thoughts down that we talk about. That's right, Jessica. This session is all about you guys. And by the end of the session, you will be able to identify benefits that are important to you, know where to find information about these benefits, understand key terms and conditions of VISTA service, and find information and support for the needs you've identified and prioritized as most essential for you to have a successful year of service. So let's start by looking at the two main websites that you will use as a VISTA member, the VISTA Campus and My AmeriCorps. My.americorps.gov is where you applied to your position, where you did your direct deposit, and where you can access your VISTA assignment description, or VAT. VISTAcampus.gov is where you completed your onboarding courses and tutorials, but the VISTA campus has much more than the tutorials you completed before coming to PSO. There are opportunities for ongoing learning. You can sign up for courses, find other VISTAs, and also learn more about all of your benefits. So let's dive deeper into all the VISTA campus has to offer. All right, so diving deeper here. Uh, by now, you've already created your account on VISTA campus. You had to do that to take that terms and conditions course. So to make things easier for you to find the resources you need, we're going to take a look at how the campus is organized. Maybe, some of you may have already gone through here, but we just want to do a light touch on this. So let's start with life as a VISTA. Uh, you've already seen the resources here, such as the benefits. Um, but there are also some other great resources under the in-service tab. Um, so you'll probably want to refer back to those benefits that we just talked about. Um, you'll also want to refer to the VISTA member handbook, which is your guide to policy and the sorts of answers to many of your questions. I know there was a question that came in in the chat that said, hey, there's a question about leave days. The VISTA member handbook is where you can get the definitive answer that you have 10 personal days, AKA vacation days, and 10 sick days as a VISTA member. So definitely want to bookmark that on your account. The work section provides online tutorials, readings, and self-directed learning on topics like working with volunteers, communication, fundraising, and much, much more. VISTA program area resources contain materials related to areas like tutoring, mentoring, financial literacy, and education. So if your project relates to one of these, you'll want to look here. There are also additional resources around community development, project management, and so much more. In the Connect and Learn heading, you're going to find um, a couple of different great things that I like to highlight. The first is the VISTA forums. They have a lot of different discussion topics. Um, they talk about different kinds of recipes um, that you can make uh, on limited funds. 
you know, what, uh, what people have done to recruit volunteers. There's a wide variety of topics, and they're all really generated by you, VISTAs. So it's a great way to get to know fellow VISTAs and get questions answered. We also have information on our upcoming webinars and our VISTA online courses. As we did earlier in this session, we did that little map exercise. We do have something called the VISTA map, and it's a great way to connect with VISTAs in your area and alumni that, um, that live near you or that serves near you. So definitely check that out, put your pin on that map, and then reach out to people living near you and see if you guys can get together and talk about VISTA service. It's also important to know that PSO is really just the start of your learning process as a VISTA member. You will receive an invitation to a webinar, plan your professional development, within the next week or so. This session will help you develop a concrete plan for gaining the knowledge and skills you'll need to succeed. Your session is scheduled for April 5th. Plus, every month, VISTA offers you webinars on a range of topics related to life at the VISTA, such as living on the living allowance and understanding your health care benefits, and topics related to the work of VISTA, such as poverty in America and researching grants. We record these sessions and offer them as webinars on demand. So if you miss a session, you can go back and watch it at any time. It's true, you know. People start to binge watch Netflix, but I binge watch webinars. <laughs> no. I don't think Anne's buying it, guys, and I don't think you are either. Um, but they're really informative, so check them out. Uh, we also offer two optional courses, one on volunteer mobilization and one on resource development for you to take as VISTA members. The courses combine training that you receive during PSO with live webinars, online discussion groups, readings, and assignments. Uh, the courses are free, and if you pass, uh, you can receive college credit uh, recommendations. The two courses are not part of PSO Blend, uh, but they are available to you to apply um, for, and they are free if you're interested, and if they all help with your VAD and with your professional development goals. So if you're interested, you can click the Apply Now button, and um, please know that when applying, that space is limited. We can mostly get everybody in, but if there's a high demand, um, It'll, um, it'll be kind of like a little lottery system. So you will receive an email when the next round of course offerings is available, which is slated for spring, summer of 2017. And I definitely recommend taking these courses, guys. I took the resource development class or course during my service year, and it was really beneficial to my project and for my professional development. Look, a walking, talking you know, spokesman for the VISTA courses, I love it. <laughs> The member handbook is the one place you can reference for VISTA policy. For example, how much leave time you have as a VISTA member, review of your terms and conditions, laws and regulations, and more. The left column allows you to quickly find a specific chapter. If you have not done so already, take a little time to familiarize yourself with the information in this member handbook. So as a VISTA, there are a lot of benefits available to you during your year of service. We touched on them in the poll earlier, and you've indicated which ones you have a lot of questions about. And in the VISTA campus, there is an overview of all those benefits, a lot of great resources. Um, some of those benefits, um, such as maybe childcare, um, may not be um, applicable to you. Um, so the, the benefits that we're gonna cover um, are the ones that we get the, hot, the most questions about in this webinar. So um, the PSO Blend workbook, uh, there was a workbook sent to you on Monday when you got the instructions on how to log into your online classroom. Um, and it is, the link is going to be posted into the chat. I'm going to go ahead and post that here right now. Um, we recommend keeping this workbook handy throughout not only VISTA, or I'm sorry, PSO Blend, but throughout your whole service. Um, it gives you quite a bit of detail about your VISTA benefits and the terms and conditions of service. And if you have it already printed out, woohoo, you're already there. And look, Joanne already posted it into the chat. Thank you, Joanne. So um, we're going to go through some of those um, high priority benefits, and we're going to talk through those a little bit. One thing I'd like to just preempt this before we get started is um, after each topic, we're going to have a specific Q&A. Um, you may have a burning question about healthcare. Um, but please save that question, typing it into the Q&A until we get to the healthcare. We want to make sure we can address all the questions, um, and it's easiest for us if you put in questions related to the topic we're talking about at that time. Um, if we don't get to your question during that specific subject time, we are going to have time at the end of this session to do so. So don't worry, we're keeping track of them. So please just make sure you type those questions into the Q&A panel. Uh, so with that, I'm going to now turn it over to Anne, who's going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, the 
Living allowance. Woo. All right, so you might be interested to know when you will receive your first living allowance payment. When will you be getting your first full payment? April 7, 2017. Unless you're being paid by a grant and you'll need to check in with your supervisor for your pay date. You're starting in the middle of a pay period, so you may receive a partial living allowance on the 24th of March, but you will receive your first full living allowance on April 7th. The living allowance schedule can be found on the VISTA campus, and the link has been posted in the chat as well as in your PSO Blend workbook. You are paid every two weeks, which is not the same as twice a month. With your monthly amount, you can do the math to determine how much will appear in your bank account every two weeks before taxes. Because state taxes are not deducted, you need to determine what you owe the state you are a resident of. We suggest you check with your state's tax office to figure that out. If you don't know what the amount of your living allowance is, you should ask your VISTA supervisor first. If they do not know, you may ask the state office or call the National Service Hotline in that order. You can also view the Living Allowance Rates by County document on the VISTA campus to determine your living allowance amount. You can access your living allowance statement at MyAmeriCorps. And um, if you're paid by a grant, your MyAmeriCorps account will not display your living allowance statement you need to contact your supervisor to find out what your pay schedule is. From the benefits page on the campus, you can access the living allowance page. Click on the resources tab to access resources, find out more information about your living allowance, and learn how to live on the living allowance. VISTAs also discuss how to make ends meet on the campus forums, once again highlighting the important support you can provide to each other. You're paid through direct deposit, which means the money automatically appears in your bank account every two weeks. Please make sure that you entered your bank account and routing numbers correctly in My AmeriCorps. Otherwise, your living allowance will not arrive, and it could be weeks before you are paid. The routing number and account number are on your checks, and they may also be found on your bank's website, but make sure you select the correct one. You probably know this already, but the account number on your debit or credit card is not your checking account number or routing number, so do not try to enter it. If you're confused or unsure of these numbers, please contact your bank. And related to, and related to your living allowance, we typically get a lot of questions about public assistance, and we wanted to give you some important information. If you apply and enroll in SNAP, formerly known as food stamps, now or at any time during your service year, your living allowance and other VISTA payments will be counted as income in calculating your eligibility and benefit level. For most other public assistance benefits, if you're applying for new benefits, your living allowance should not be factored in when determining the level of benefits you receive. If you're already receiving SNAP, TANF, LIHEAP, or any other public assistance um, benefits prior to enrolling in the VISTA program, your living allowance or any other payments you receive from the VISTA program should not affect the level of assistance you receive. Public benefits are managed by state or local entities, and CNCS is not involved in how they are administered, so you'll want to speak with a caseworker for advice. In about a week, you will be able to print a letter citing the authority for income disregard from your homepage in My AmeriCorps. So we just reviewed information regarding the living allowance you received during service. Remember to refer to the benefits page of the VISTA campus for more details about any of your benefits. We may have generated a few questions about your benefits, so we'll pause to take some of them now. I'll invite our operator, Robin, to give us instructions on how to ask questions by phone. And thank you. At this time for a question, please press star, followed by the number one. Please unmute your line and record your name clearly as prompted, so that I'll be able to introduce you. Again, with a question, please press star, followed by the number one. Thanks, Robin. And you can continue to submit your questions online through the Q&A panel. If you don't see the Q&A panel, look in the upper right corner of the screen and click on Q&A. Great. So um, as we wait for some questions to come in, um, we can't stress enough how important it is, the direct deposit. I know that Ann touched on it very thoroughly. Thank you for doing that, Ann. Um, it's very important that you get that right. We want to see you get paid, so make sure you double check, triple check that direct deposit information. Um, it looks like we did get one question in the chat. Randolph, I'm going to answer your question in the chat, but if you have any future questions, please put them in the Q&A so that we can track them. 
Um, so you asked, what about the rent subsidy? So um, the rent subsidy, I appreciate it, Randolph, no worries. <laughs> um, so uh, the rent subsidy, some of you, some of your projects may have said when they recruited you that they offer a benefit, um, they can help, um, you know, subsidize some of your rent. Um, maybe they're gonna give you $100 for rent each month, um, but they're gonna pay directly to your landlord. Um, that is something that your project will do. Um, and it's not, not every project does it. Not, projects are not required to do so. Um, but if your project had talked to you about doing that, um, you will wanna talk to your supervisor um, directly about that rent subsidy. Um, it's not administered by us, but by your project, and they would need to pay those funds directly to your landlord. Um, great. Um, looks like Randolph's the only question right now. Oops, I spoke too soon. Um, Lorian said, if we think that we entered the wrong account number, do we still have time to change it today? Lorian, and I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Yes, you do. You do have, um, you, you can update that information. Um, your direct deposit information can be updated at any time during your service. So if you change banks in the middle of your year, you can definitely um, update your direct deposit information. Um, what I'm going to say is going to be a little is going to be a little odd, but um, it's something to just keep in mind. Never change your direct deposit information on a Tuesday. The reason for that is that payroll runs every other Tuesday. So if you make a change to your direct deposit on one of the days that payroll is running, that means that your payment may go to the old account or it may go to the new account. And we don't want you having to guess on that. So what I recommend that you do is never change it on a Tuesday. And if you're able, if you're switching banks, you're putting in a new account, if you're able to keep the current account you have in the system open, input that new data, and once you confirm that you receive your, your living allowance into that new account, then you can go ahead and close that other one. Um, that's just the best way to make sure you always get your funds. Uh, let's take a look here. So Samantha asked, um, do AmeriCorps members have any extra paperwork to fill out with income taxes? Um, so no, they no. should have the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Ann here. Ann <laughs> just served in 2015, 2016, so I don't think you had any extra no. things you had to fill out. There isn't any extra paperwork, but you do have to figure out um, Whatever, whichever state you're currently living in, you'll have to pay taxes to that state. So you just have to kind of do extra legwork in terms of figuring out how much that is and um, how to get all of that information. That's right, yeah. So, um, so yeah, no extra paperwork. There's no like special like VISTA tax form or anything. Just your W-2 when it's tax season. Uh, we did have a question here from Tina. Tina asks, I'm not sure I understand the income exclusion for SNAP benefits. As a state and national AmeriCorps, uh, living, the, living, uh, sorry, the living stipend was not counted. Um, so, Tina, uh, the reason for that is the reason that it is included for VISTA, um, and I, I don't know the rules around AmeriCorps State National, but I know that the, the reason that it is for SNAP is due to the Domestic Volunteer Service Act of 1973. Um, so, it's, it's legislative that that's the reason that it's counted. Um, so um, I know, I'm not sure the provisions around state and national, but I just know that that's the that's the reason um, that SNAP benefits or your income is counted for SNAP benefits if you apply while you're already serving as a VISTA. Jackson Miller asks, are there other ways of being notified of payments in your workbook and on the campus? There is the um, the calendar that shows when those will, um, when those payments will be. One other thing you could do, I'm not sure if you have mobile banking, but your bank, you can also set it up um, so that your bank will kind of ping you or send you a notification when you get paid. That's right, I do that all the time. I have, I have alerts on my thing, like whenever I have a direct deposit, it's like a direct deposit has been posted to your account. Um, I wish like a voice would come on and tell me that when I answered my phone, but. Um, but yeah, so that's a, that's a great suggestion, Ann. Um, I'm gonna go and see, uh, Robin, do we have any questions coming in over the phone? Yes, we do. We have a first one is from Kaylin Corlin. Your line's open. Hi there, Kaylin. Hi, Hi. Um, I just had a quick question regarding, okay, I already get SNAP benefits, 
So do I still have to report that or no? So if you were already receiving the SNAP benefit uh, prior to starting yeah. this, so if you're already receiving it, then um, mm -hmm. then what you can do um, is whenever you have like a next meeting with the caseworker, they ask for any of those um, maybe documentation of income, you can give them what's called an income disregard letter. It's a service okay. letter that you're going to have available on your my.americorps.gov account in about a week that just lets them know, hey, I'm serving as a VISTA member because I was already receiving this benefit prior, my income shouldn't okay. count. So that letter should be specific for them. Okay, and then where can I find that? Um, it's going to be on your my.americorps.gov account um, under my service letters, and you'll have access okay. to that for about a week. Okay, thank you. No problem. And thank you. We do have another question from uh, Diana Smith. Your line's open. Great. Hi, Diana. Hi, ladies. Um, the question was for uh, the partial payment. If that does not come on the 24th, will it still then be on the uh, payment that comes on the 7th? That's correct. So, um, so yeah, that's a great question. So more than likely, you're going to receive a partial payment for the time you're serving in this pay period on the 24th. If, however, that does not happen, if you don't get those funds on the 24th, those funds for this partial this partial pay period are going to be added to your full living allowance payment on the 7th. So you're definitely going to get those funds. It'll either be the 24th or you'll get um, this pay period plus next pay periods on the 7th. On the 7th, okay. And then one quick question about the caller previous. Um, what was the name of the income form that, that was mentioned um, that would be presented to the DHS office, provided that anything needed to, needs to be provided? Yeah, it's called the um, the income disregard letter, and it's on your My AmeriCorps account. Um, it's not there yet. Um, you'll have access to it in about a week, and it'll be under the tab that says My Service Letters. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, so, do we have any Robin? Do we have any other questions over the phone? I'm sure no further questions at the, on the phone at this time. Great. Um, so. It looks like there's one other question we're going to take here, and then we're going to move on to our next section. Um, someone asked here, will the VISTA program interfere with the SNAP benefits? Um, so I, I'm not sure what you mean by, by interfere. Um, the SNAP benefits and any public service benefits are administered at a state and local level. Um, as we mentioned, for SNAP benefits, um, if you were receiving benefits prior to starting, then your VISTA income, your VISTA living allowance won't count towards your level of benefits. Um, however, if you apply now, then it will. Your living allowance will count. Um, um, I hope that answered the question. Um, you know, we don't interfere. We don't say, hey, as a VISTA, you cannot apply for this. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered that question. Um, so if you have more questions about the living allowance, you can keep them coming. Um, the topic we're going to talk about next is healthcare, which I know um, was a big topic. So. Um, let's go ahead and dive in a little bit to healthcare. So we understand that this is an important topic um, and that everyone has different needs around healthcare. So we're going to give you some overviews of our healthcare benefits and our allowance. And um, if you have further questions, especially ones that are specific to um, your own circumstances, um, you can do some research um, through some of the resources that we um, that we discussed. So. And most of you should know that the Affordable Care Act um, governs access to health care insurance and its provisions, um, and that it applies to everyone, including you as a VISTA member. Um, you're required to have insurance unless you are legally exempt. And if you're legally exempt from having to have health insurance, we offer a safety net benefit. Uh, the safety net covers uh, emergencies and some out-of-pocket expenses, has a great prescription benefit, and it also covers basic medical expenses. Um, due to the requirements that are in the Affordable Care Act, um, some of you may be required to have additional insurance. So um, if you're not sure about what your responsibility is, if you don't have health insurance right now and you don't know, um, you should visit healthcare.gov and seek assistance from a healthcare navigator um, to determine what you're responsible for, if you have to have health insurance or if you're legally exempt. Um, 
Healthcare is not one size fit all, fits all, and um, your individual circumstances may change during your service. Um, so we want you to weigh in all those different options to make the best choice for you. So um, we have two benefits here. Um, so let's talk about the first one. So if you have health insurance, if you have health insurance um, through a spouse, through a parent, um, if you have Medicaid, Medicare, TRICARE, if you um, have insurance through the healthcare marketplaces, um, then you're eligible to enroll in the VISTA healthcare allowance. Uh, the allowance provides reimbursement of up to $7,150 for qualifying health expenses. Now, this is uh, limited to essential health benefits. So elective or cosmetic procedures may not be covered. Um, we set the allowance at $7,150 because that's the maximum out-of-pocket that any American will incur in 2017. You can use this allowance um, to pay for your annual deductible or co-insurance costs. Um, your co-payments for doctor's visits or prescriptions or for prescriptions in general. Um, one thing to know is that you cannot use this allowance to pay for your premiums. So if, you know, each month for your health insurance it's $100, you can't use this allowance to pay that $100 for your premium. Um, the next benefit that we have is the health benefits, just the safety net plan, and that is if you are legally exempt and therefore not required to have health insurance. Um, you, can get, you can get the safety net benefit, um, and like I said, it covers those basic needs. Um, both of these benefits are administered by International Medical Group, or IMG. To receive a benefit, you must enroll, and there is not an automatic enrollment. So you must make your selection on the um, IMG website, which is listed on the screen, in order to enroll. Um, you're going to be able to enroll in about a week once we get you fully processed in our system and, um, and get you active for service. Um, and you will have 60 days from the time that you begin service, so you started service on Monday, you'll have 60 days from that day to enroll in the benefit. Um, Please note, though, that getting health insurance and, and applying for an exemption can take weeks, if not months, to be processed. So in order for you not to miss the 60-day um, enrollment deadline for our health benefit, um, you should complete your application for other health care or for an exemption as soon as possible, um, just to make sure you meet that deadline. Um, Another thing that comes up, um, a lot of people are probably thinking, hey, wait, open season's already closed for healthcare. As um, joining VISTA is considered a qualifying life event, do you have a 60-day special enrollment period to, um, to get health insurance through the healthcare marketplace? So that's a cool benefit of VISTA. Um, this might sound obvious, but it's just a quick thing we need to note. You can only have one of these benefits. You can have both. So if you have health insurance, you can't have the, the safety net, and if you don't have health insurance, then you can't enroll in the allowance. Um, also, a, a quick note is that the health allowance, the healthcare allowance, does also, um, the allowance and the benefit also does provide basic benefits for vision and dental, which is really great because that's something that's fairly new as of August of this year, of last year. So take a look at IMG's website for more information about what's covered and um, what benefit uh, fits for you. So, healthcare, that was a doozy, a lot of healthcare stuff. So, um, I'm sure we have some questions, sure we generated a lot. So, um, remember, if you want to ask a question by the phone, you can press star one and state your name clearly, and we'll take some questions over the phone. Otherwise, please put your questions in the Q&A and we'll answer some of those. So, let's take a look here. Linnea said, um, does this offer dental and vision? We do offer some of those benefits, um, as I mentioned. If we are insured with health insurance, however, do we, we do not have dental or vision. Could VISTA offer us just those two? So, cool thing about that, Linnea. So, if you have Blue Cross, for example, but Blue Cross doesn't offer vision or dental benefits, um, and you need to go get an eye exam or you need to, you know, get your teeth cleaned, um, you can use the allowance, our allowance, although you don't have specific dental or vision coverage. So that's a cool thing, that's a, that's a neat thing that, that we've allowed, that even if you don't have specific dental or vision health insurance, 
you can still use the allowance to pay for those essential benefits. Um, so we don't like offer an insurance plan for it, um, but you can use the allowance for some of those costs. Um, let's take a look here. Um, so Michael Payne, Michael, you wrote this in the chat, so I'm going to answer your question, but please put it in the Q&A so I can track it. Um, where do I sign up for the health allowance? Um, so um, Joanne, I'm going to ask if we can go back one step and um, put it to the, the slide before this one. Um, you are going to apply um, for on americorvista.iamglobal.com. You're not going to be able to apply yet. You're going to have access in about a week. So if you try to log in now and it says no, it's not, it's, it's going to be there in a week. So please try in a week and you'll have access. Leah asks, so if I have insurance through the marketplace, I can use the health care allowance for deductibles and prescriptions. What about co-pays? Yes, you can use your health care allowance on co-pays as well. That's true. That's true. That's a cool little benefit. Um, let me take a look here. Sorry, guys, there's a lot of questions. We want to make sure we get to them. So Lucas asks, if I apply for the, um, for the ACA and then am later put on a parent's insurance, can I change to the safety net instead. So, um, so Lucas, if you choose health insurance through the marketplace, but then you go on your parents later, you're technically still covered under insurance because you're on your parents' insurance. So you keep the, the health allowance the entire time. Um, it's only if you're legally exempt from having to have health insurance would you be on the safety net plan. That's a great question. Leah, I love your enthusiasm in the chat. I'm, I'm really digging it, I really have to say. So let's take a look here. So Uday, and I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, um, has asked us if, um, if the allowance is the maximum out-of-pocket one person can spend in 2017, should I just look for a low premium plan? Um, it really depends on your needs. Um, we can't say specifically like what, um, what you can and can't do or what you should and should not do. Um, a, low pre, a low premium plan would obviously not cost you much each month because it's a low, a low amount. Um, however, it may not include um, all the things that you want. So maybe, um, maybe you have a specific need um, that maybe they just wouldn't have that great a benefit for. Do you just want to look at the marketplace and just see what the options are and do kind of your own cost benefit analysis to say, yeah, it's going to cost me a little bit more and I can swing it, but I'm going to get what I really need. Or if you're like, hey, I don't need to go to the doctor that much, let me just get something really low and if something comes up, then I have the allowance. You know, look at that and see kind of what your options are. Okay, asks a really good question. If you use the allowance for a dental cleaning appointment, do you go to the appointment and wait until you are billed to get it paid for, or does the health care, uh-oh, it's scrolling. I know. <laughs> um, or does the health care allowance provide a card that is similar to your insurance card to use at the time of service? So you will pay out of pocket first, and then um, will be reimbursed through the health care allowance. That's right. So I'm going to ask Robin. Robin, do you have any questions coming in over the phone? Yes, we have a question from Kaylin. Your line's open. Okay. Um, I, hi. I just had another quick question regarding the health benefits. Um, so I currently get everything, like, covered because I have Medicaid, but, for instance, could this be used uh, for something that Medicaid does not cover, like, let's say, a chiropractor? Yeah, so um, so that's a great question, um, and that's a question that you'd want to ask IMG. Um, they're going to know the ins and outs about um, if your insurance, if your insurance doesn't necessarily cover it, um, do can you still use the allowance? Um, I know that that's the case for vision and dental, but I'm not 100% sure on, like, chiropractic services. Um, so I would okay. check in with IMG. Um, okay. I don't want to give you any false information, so I'm going to no, ask you no, to follow up with no. them. <laughs> Okay, and then like, well, going back to dental, this would just be another question too. Like, let's say like, could I get like fitted for a new retainer? 
Um, it's under, so it has to be, it's like um, essential benefits. So um, okay. it, it, it's for like, it can't be used to, like for elective or cosmetic procedures. Um, oh, okay. Services. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You want to see if a retainer fits into that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm showing no further questions at this time. Great. Thank you. So we're going to take two more. I know there's, I know there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and like I said, we're going to get to this at the end as well. Um, Megan, I know you asked in here, can it cover your monthly premium? No, unfortunately, it cannot cover your monthly premium, the health care allowance. Um, someone asked, will this cover pre-existing conditions? So um, health insurance under the Affordable Care Act, it's required to cover pre-existing conditions. So if you have insurance through the marketplace or whatnot, that will cover pre-existing conditions. If you are exempt and are on the safety net benefit, that um, that does not cover pre-existing conditions. However, it does cover most pre-existing prescriptions. So if you have um, high blood pressure, um, you can get your high blood pressure medication and that'll be covered by the health benefit, but like your monthly or quarterly visits to the doctor for your blood pressure would not be covered. Um, Let's take a look here. Someone asked if I'm on Medicaid, do I need to sign up for insurance? Um, no, you do not. That, that, that qualifies as insurance um, for us. So we're going to now move on to another big topic, which is the Education Award. Like I said, keep those questions coming, but Anne is going to talk about all of that money you're going to get at the end of service. Ooh. So after successfully completing your service, you are eligible for one or two benefits the Education Award, or the Cash Stipend. So with the, education of, with, uh, with the Education Award, you receive one of these at the um, end of your service, in addition to, not deducted from, your bi-weekly living allowance. The Education Award is good for seven years after you complete service. It's taxable in the calendar year or years that it is used. Um, you can use all of your Education Award at once if you wish, but you may also use it incrementally. If you select the Education Award in about a week, you will have a new link in your My AmeriCorps account called My Education Award, where you see the details and submit Education Award payment requests at the end of your year of service. The award can be used to pay off federal loans or to pay for education at any Title IV institution, and a Title IV institution is an institution that accepts federal funds. Um, there are also institutions that match the Education Award, which you can find um, at the nationalservice.gov website. The cash stipend is paid out via direct deposit at the very end of your service, and it's taxable in the calendar year that it is received. Remember, if you selected the Education Award now and you want to change to the cash stipend, you can at any time prior to your 10th month of service. So if you selected the cash stipend, you are unable to change your selection. Um, there are ways you can postpone the repayment of federally backed student loans during your service year. If you choose the Education Award, you can request forbearance, which means you do not make monthly loan payments during your service year. And if you complete your term of national service, then, and if you complete your term, the National Service Trust will pay the accrued interest for the year. Be aware that the interest payment is considered taxable income. Forbearance is processed through your member homepage in your My AmeriCorps account. Forbearance is not guaranteed, and you must initiate the process by submitting a loan forbearance request in your My AmeriCorps account. If you've selected the end of service type end, you may request a loan deferment by applying to your lender, giving the reason of economic hardship. For federally subsidized loans, Accrued interest may be paid by the Department of Education if the loan is deferred. Check with your lender for specifics. Loan deferment is not guaranteed. Um, your loan lender may not offer it. The Perkins loans may be partially forgiven if the VISTA elects to receive the cash stipend. Go to edaward.org to learn more. I'll briefly mention two more programs to consider um, to help you manage your student loans. First is income-based repayment, which adjusts your monthly payments based on your income. 
At the VISTA, your payments will be pretty low and can be as low as zero dollars. It won't reduce the amount you have to pay back, but it will shrink your monthly payments to a manageable amount. The other strategy works really well in concert with the first. This is the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Are any of you with federal direct loans considering working in the nonprofit government association or education sectors? If so, you will want to learn about this program. If you work for 10 years in public service positions and make 120 on-time payments during this time, any balance on your federal loans is forgiven after 10 years. You apply for this at the end of the 10 years, but you'll want to learn now about the type of records you will need to keep in order to apply. Of course, there are a lot of details to both of these, and you can learn more about them at nationalservice.gov. For more details on everything we just covered, go to the Ed Award tutorial, which is at nationalservice.gov, and go to My AmeriCorps to submit your loan forbearance request with CNCS. Remember that it is your responsibility to submit the forbearance request and check on its status at the end of the year. It is also your responsibility to submit an education award payment request as well as interest accrual payment request. So we've just reviewed information regarding education and loans. Remember to refer to the benefits page of the VISTA campus for more details about any of your benefits. We may have generated some questions about your benefits, so we'll pause to take some of them now. Remember, if you want to ask a question verbally, to press star 1. And you can continue to submit your questions online through the Q&A panel. Thank you. So um, Diana here has a question. She said, will the award still apply if I'm in default for a loan payment? So um, if you are in default, you cannot use your uh, education award to pay a loan that's in default. Um, you should be able to set up a payment plan with your lender or with the uh, collection agency to bring yourself out of default. And then once you're out of default, then you should be able to do that. All right. Let's see here. Um, So let's see, Carrie here asks, if I have already qualified for $0, $0 a month payments on my federal loans due to income-based repayments, could I still apply for the forbearance as a VISTA so that I can get my interest accrued, accrued interest paid at the end of the year? Um, so Carrie, you should be able to do that. You'll want to talk to your lender uh, because, as Ann mentioned, uh, forbearance and deferment are really um, are really at the discretion of the lender, so you want to make sure that you can do that. But if you can put your loan in forbearance, um, then yeah, you should be able to do the interest or accrual payment. No problem. So let's take a look here. Um, so Renisha, you asked a question in the chat. I'm going to answer it for you, but please put it in the Q&A for me. I appreciate it. Um, also, you too, Raquel, please put it in the Q&A. <laughs> Um, Renisha here asked, um, hello, would this apply to school private loans? Um, so the education award can only be used for um, federal direct loans. Um, so if you have private loans, you may want to explore um, other options. Um, and you can visit the um, education award um, website. Let me see, Anne, you just mentioned that, didn't you, the education award website? Yep, it's edaward.org. Um, and then, I'm sorry, that link is no longer Good, and that's my fault, Anne. Sorry. It is, uh, no, it's good. It's nationalservice.gov slash resources uh, slash resources slash at award. Um, and you can see all the types of loans that you can use the education award to pay. Um, so there's a whole list of what types of loans qualify and all of that good stuff. Someone asked about Perkins loans and they may be um, partially forgiven if the VISTA elects to receive the cash stipend. Great. Let's take a look. Um, and as Ann mentioned, Perkins loans. So if the person who's asking about private loans, if they are meaning Perkins loans, then, then what Ann said, um, they can be um, partially, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. That's okay. Uh, they partially, partially forgiven. Correct. Um, let's take a look here. Sorry, we're scrolling through questions. And these are pretty detailed ones. Someone asked, if I am currently already in a deferment because I'm getting my master's, will this award apply to my tuition fees for the 2018 summer or fall semester? I believe you can use them for either. Um, 
So, yeah, so 2018, yeah, you're going to end school in 20, or you're going to end service in 2018, yeah, so you can use either one. Um, you know, you earn your education award after you finish service, so you decide which tuition fees it covers. Great. What other questions do we have here? Someone asked, oh, yeah, um, I served with AmeriCorps before during the summer and received a partial Siegel scholarship. Will that be deducted from my end of the year education scholarship for this year of service? No, you'll get an additional Siegel award. Yeah, so you can earn up to two um, full-time Eli Siegel Fellow, uh, Eli Siegel Education Awards in your lifetime. So as long as you haven't exceeded that two, then you're good to go. Um, someone else here asked, um, sorry, this chat is scrolling, so I lose it as I'm going. Um, so someone asked, um, concerning forbearance, after we submit the request through my AmeriCorps, do we also have to con contact our loan providers, or does AmeriCorps do that for us? That's a great question. So once you submit the request into the My AmeriCorps system, you, um, the request is automatically submitted to your lender. So you choose, you fill out all the information, it's sent to your lender, and then it's on them to like approve it, deny it, whatever, and then they do it. That's their notification. Um, if you see that it's like been pending for like two weeks, three weeks, then you maybe want to contact them to just say, hey, I submitted this, can you approve it for me? Um, but you should have no need um, to contact them directly unless you have a specific question about your loan. Are there any questions on the phone? I'm sorry, no questions from the phone line at this time. Great. So let's take a look here. Um, I'm trying to make sure we get these questions. Um, so Diana asked, will this award take care of a past due bill for the school directly? Unfortunately, no, Diana. This cannot be used for past due um, bills that the school has. So if you had a loan through the school, then it could pay it, um, but you can't use it um, for, for like past due if you own something. So, um, and one of my colleagues here, Khadija, she uh, helped me clarify something, and I wanna make sure I clarify this for Renisha. Um, Renisha asked about school private loans. So it looks like re if you were talking about private school loans, so if you went to a private school and you had a loan, um, which is like a Perkins loan, um, then you should be eligible to use the education award to pay for that, um, to pay towards that loan. And like I mentioned, you can go to nationalservice.gov slash resources slash ed award to learn more about how you can pay that. Um, so thank you, Khadija, for, for that. Um, so looks like we've kind of wrapped up most of the questions for the education award. We will still have time at the end of the session to talk a little bit more about it if there are questions. Um, so let's move on to our next part, which is just a little overview of the My AmeriCorps um, system. So once you're activated in our system, which um, is in about a week from now, you'll see some new options on the left-hand menu. Um, if you relocated to serve, uh, please be sure to update your address by clicking on Edit My Contact Information. Um, this is extremely important. This is how we contact you. Um, I also recommend um, for some of you who, you know, you guys are in PSO Blend, you're gonna be receiving notifications from your facilitator, questions about reminders for assignments. Um, the email address that you have associated in your VISTA classroom should be the one that you're gonna check. So if you just got a new brand spanking Habitat for Humanity email address, because that's where you're serving, and that's what you're gonna check during the day, uh, make sure to put that email address in your classroom uh, login. We wanna make sure you get these emails, so um, just make sure that whatever you have in any of these things, the campus, the classroom, My AmeriCorps, or something that you're gonna check daily. Um, so um, the My Living Allowance tab, as we said earlier, is where your monthly living allowance statements will be. They're not gonna be mailed to you, but they'll be here where you can view and, and uh, print them out if you so wish. Your My Tax Statements tab is where you can access your W-2 wage statement um, come next tax 
season and where you'll get your 1099 once you use your education award. And then um, you also have my service letter, which I talked about a little bit earlier. The service letter, this is where you would get um, the public service, I'm sorry, the public, uh, sorry, I can't even speak today, income disregard letter, as well as a certification of service letter once you end service that also talks about your non-competitive eligibility. So a few good service letters there. And if you selected the education award, you'll also have a My Education Award link, which is not on the slide, but it will be there on the left-hand side. And that is where you'll submit forbearance requests and later the payments for the education award and the interest accrual of payments. If you have additional questions about your benefits at any time during your service, the VISTA Member Support Unit, or VMSU, is who you call regarding benefits. Um, help with my.americorps.gov my and general assistance. We've just covered a lot of information and it is likely that you will have questions in the coming weeks. So keep this contact information where you can find it. This information can also be found on the VISTA campus. So we're gonna take a little um, interactive thing here in a second. Um, we know you did the terms and conditions course online, but we wanna make sure that everyone is clear about the conditions of service. So we want to do a quick activity around that. So we're gonna read off a series of statements and scenarios. Uh, you're gonna use the same annotation tools that you use to put your name on the map uh, to participate in this. So we're gonna read a statement, and if you believe the answer is yes, then you're gonna put your arrow in the yes area, and if you think it's no, you're gonna put it in the no area. Um, so let's get started. So first one. I could voice my political opinion using social media where I am identified as an AmeriCorps VISTA member. Yes or no? Ooh, look at all these, Anne. They're like wow, going for the no. Also, don't fall into peer pressure. Like, do your thing. Like, Audrey right there, she's like, nope, I'm, I'm confident in my answer. <laughs> I like it. Keep putting them on there. Don't fall into peer pressure. Do what your heart and what the terms and conditions course told you. Um, all right. So we're getting it. All right. I like how Marissa here is right on the line. She's like, I am non-committal, and I am saying mm -hmm. it could be yes, it could be no. Um, so we're going to do the answer here in one, two, three. Yes. Yes, you can. You can voice your political opinion, but not while you're at uh, your service site serving or using any equipment at your site. And this includes their Wi-Fi network. So if anybody, man, first thing you got to service yesterday and, or on Monday and you put in that Wi-Fi password in your phone and you're doing some political stuff, you cannot do that. So please don't. Um, you must keep your political action limited to your off-duty hours. You cannot represent yourself as a spokesman for AmeriCorps, for VISTA, for the Corporation for National and Community Service, or your sponsor. So, do not include the VISTA logo on your social media profile if you will be engaging in political activity. So, just a quick thing there, guys. All right, next question. I can demonstrate in a political rally. Yes or no? All right, I think this is what usually happens. We do the first one, most people, like, they think it's no, but it's yes, and now they're like, no, I know this one's yes. Yes. Um, Grace, man, Grace is just like, I, she's in protest. I'm not even answering this question. She's all the way up top. <laughs> Angela, you know, feel your gut. If you think the answer is no, you put it there. Um, someone I can't even read is off the screen. Oh, that was Grace. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> all right. And the answer is yes, as long as you're not identified as a VISTA or perceived to be a VISTA, which is a really important note because you may be serving in a small town or a local area where even if you're not wearing your VISTA polo shirt or VISTA gear, people will know that you're a VISTA. But, um, so when you're in doubt about a specific activity, make sure you consult your state office first. That's right. Yeah, we want, we want to make sure you guys are all kept legal here, okay? So next question. I can ask people to donate money to a partisan political candidate as long as it's on my own time and I'm not identified as a VISTA? Yes or no? Diana was really quick with that one. I like it. And then I like this one, a lot of 50-50. I mean, more people are leaning to yes. Ethan, man, he's not committal. I dig it. Um, 
And I can't ever tell if people like put it all the way on the nose, they're like super no, and then like towards the middle, they're like, I think it's no, I don't know what it is. Um, all right, it looks like it's a fair, it's a, it's a really equitable thing here, a little bit more to the yes. Um, so the answer to this is no, no you cannot, no. All you yes sirs, it's a no. Uh, you cannot raise money on behalf of a partisan political candidate at any time during your VISTA year. Whether you're at your site, um, on your couch, not at your, not doing anything with VISTA, you cannot do it. Um, it is a violation of the Hatch Act, and you cannot fundraise for partisan political candidates during your VISTA year. You can, however, uh, raise funds in support of an issue on your own time, but you cannot be identified as a VISTA. All right, next question. I can join my colleagues in a prayer at my service site. Yes or no? All right. Got some no's. The no's are taking a lead. Man, Walter, I keep seeing you go back and forth on yes or no. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to put my own annotation there. That's not an indication of anything, everybody. I'm, I'm yeah. This one's pretty 50-50, too. It is. It is really 50-50. A lot of people on that middle line. All right, and the answer to this one is yes, you can, but you can't proselytize or ask people to pray with you. Also, while your VAD cannot ask you to pray, you're free to practice your religion. That's right. So our last one here, um, I can have outside employment and or earn additional income while serving as a VISTA member. People are very confident on this one. Yeah, you know, they were really confident on the on the political fundraising, so what does that say? I mean, That's true. <laughs> as you sure, they're not even, like, falling for it in here. I'm like, I'm saying things. They're just totally going for it. Well, someone circled yes. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, well, fine. You guys just know everything. Uh, yes, you can. You are allowed to have outside employment. Um, however, there are a few policies to keep in mind. Um, so you can have outside employment as long as it does not conflict with your VISTA service. So um, it can't conflict with your service hours um, or anything like that. And your VISTA project needs to take priority. So your outside employment must work around your VISTA schedule, not the other way around. Um, and it also must follow and not conflict with any applicable laws or VISTA program policies or requirements. Um, you also cannot be employed by your VISTA sponsor. Um, under no circumstances can you be employed. So for some of you, you may be serving um, with a university. So maybe you're doing something in one very limited capacity, but you also see that they're hiring tutors um, in a completely different unit than yours. Can't do it. Um, it's the same organization and it's a giant conflict of interest. So you cannot serve at your sponsoring site. Also, your supervisor must approve it. The supervisor must agree that this work uh, will not interfere with your VISTA service, and if it is seen that it will, you either must uh, quit that outside employment or leave VISTA service. Um, another quick thing here, this question usually comes up around outside employment, um, is school. So a lot of people go to school at the same time as serving with VISTA. Um, you, can, you can go to school part-time, but once again, your VISTA service may take, or must take precedence. So if you have a class that conflicts with a blend session or um, something that's being required at your site, you got to skip that class. Um, your VISTA position must take priority. That was a lot of information, but if you have any questions about what the limitations on political activities are for you as a VISTA member and other regulations and laws regarding your service, such as the Hatch Act, please revisit the Terms and Condition course and view Chapter 14 of the VISTA Member Handbook. So moving on from what is expected of you, let's talk about your rights and responsibilities. So prior to starting service, you should have taken the Civil Rights and Responsibilities course on the VISTA campus. So we just want to recap this course a bit. If you believe that you have experienced or witnessed discrimination or harassment, and if you feel safe and comfortable doing so, you should first approach the person and talk to them. Um, if to that person that you suspect of engaging in that uh, behavior. If that doesn't work, or if you do not feel comfortable in doing so, then you should talk with your VISTA supervisor. 
If you cannot go to your supervisor or if you do and the matter is not resolved, um, you can contact your state office. Finally, if something does not get resolved at the state office level, which myself I have not heard of that happening, um, but if it doesn't, you can contact the Corporation's Office of Civil Rights and Inclusiveness, or, or OCRI. The next one is um, regarding our Inspector General. So AmeriCorps VISTA is a federal program, and like any program supported by taxpayer funds, we need to ensure that our program is well run, doing what it's, what it's supposed to do, and spending money wisely. So like all federal agencies, CNCS have a inspector general whose office is responsible for preventing and detecting waste, fraud, and abuse. If, there, um, if you suspect something of this, you would need to let your state office know. Um, but here are some red flags to be aware of. If you're being asked to take over work of someone who left, um, that's considered replacing staff, and that's not allowed. So if they said, hey, man, Stacy, who is our social media expert and our social media director, just left, but we'll get the VISTA to do it, nope, that's replacing staff and it's not allowed. Also, if most of what you're doing is administrative support for someone else, that's not appropriate work for you. So if your nickname is now becoming uh, Jessica the Coffee Girl in your office and you get orders at your desk every day, that's not cool. Uh, your work should be focused on things in your VISTA assignment description, and that would tie overall to your project goal that was agreed upon with uh, AmeriCorps VISTA. And I can guarantee you copy gathering was not part of that. Also, the majority of your work needs to be capacity building, not direct service. Um, you're going to learn more about what the difference between indirect and direct service is, um, but you need to be doing um, indirect service. Once again, if you see issues or if you feel like any of this is going on, first, talk to your supervisor. That doesn't resolve the issue. Talk to your state office. And if um, it doesn't get resolved at that level, you can contact our Office of the Inspector General. So we want to remind you of a few sources of support as you move further into your VISTA experience. Your supervisor should be your first contact for any questions related to your VAD or workplace. If your project has a VISTA leader, not all projects do, he or she can be a resource as well. The corporation has representatives in every state and territory working in corporation state offices. They can handle issues related to your VISTA sponsor, supervisor, or emergencies that may affect your service. Your online classroom facilitator is available to support you in completing your PSO assignments. And as we mentioned earlier, the VISTA Member Support Unit, VMSU, helps with questions about benefits my.americorps.gov, or when in doubt, reach them through the National, Hotline, National Service Hotline. This information is on the VISTA campus. Search support and keep it where you can find it. So one of the greatest things about being a VISTA member is being part of a wonderful family of VISTAs, um, both those who are serving right now, but also those who have served many decades ago. Um, and as a VISTA community member, we want you to be able to show your VISTA pride because um, you never know where that connection is going to take you. So um, we want you to put that AmeriCorps VISTA logo on your business cards, um, in your email signature, and on your organization's website, social media, and brochures. Um, let them know that a VISTA is serving here and let them know about all the great work that you're going to do this year. Um, the more visible you are, the more support you get, um, not only for your project, but for the VISTA program as a whole which means more of us is in the community um, doing the work that needs to be done. Um, we just posted some web links in the chat, two places that you can get VISTA publications uh, to use in your office to represent VISTA in the field, such as posters and things like that. Uh, don't forget to take pictures and share them with us uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we may share your story or retweet it um, or any of those kind of good things, so please, please, please share that. Um, another fun thing, once you complete PSO Blend, so once you've made it through these three weeks, you're going to receive an email from me with instructions on how to order your free, yes, I said free, uh, Vista Polo, lapel pin, and reusable tote bag. Um, pretty sweet stuff. So um, keep an eye out for that. So here are a few reminders about things you need to do as part of your entry into the Vista program. If you haven't already, log into your online classroom. Do this today. Review your VISTA benefits, especially your health care benefits. 
make sure you have health coverage or get documentation of your exemption from the requirement. Um, do both of these at healthcare.gov. Enroll in a VISTA health benefit option. Remember, you'll be getting an email from IMG with a link to enroll. And get fingerprinted <laughs> um, and submit criminal history questionnaire, if applicable. You should have the fingerprinting materials. If not, get them from your supervisor. And if your supervisor doesn't have it, send us an email at vistafingerprint at cns.gov. So, Let's review what's going to come up next uh, for PSO Blend. So um, first is Sunday, March 19th. That's your first homework assignment. So as Ann said, you need to log into your online classroom. You got that link on Monday. Hopefully all of you have already logged in, got a feel for that, even checked out your assignments. If you have not, please do it today. Um, please, like today, um, once you get off this webinar, please do it. We want to make sure that you can get these assignments done and that you have enough time, because we don't want to see you scrambling on Sunday night, realizing I don't have all the information I need to make the deadline. Um, also, next Wednesday, March 22nd, the same time as right now, you're going to have your first virtual meetup, and that will also take place in your online classroom. And then um, the following Sunday, you're going to have uh, your 13 lessons about poverty and your community profile due. This is all in that calendar that was sent to you in the guide to entering VISTA service. If you cannot find that guide, please let me know. Um, but it was sent to you. Um, once again, um, it is essential that you put these dates on your calendar. Um, whether you do that at your work calendar or your personal calendar or what I would recommend, both. Um, we don't want to remove you from service for noncompliance. Um, these field work assignments and virtual meetups will enable you to further understand what you're doing as a VISTA member, um, how the VISTA uh, program works, how you fit into uh, the poverty uh, dimension of VISTA, um, and really get to know each other in the meetup. So please do that. Um, if you have any questions, you can always let me know. Um, you all have my email. <laughs> All right, so we're now going to take some questions from the audience, but, but before we do, I'll mention the evaluation poll that's now open on the right side of the screen. Please take a moment to answer the 10 questions. You'll need to use the scroll bar to see them all. All right, and now we're going to do Q&A. Um, we know we have a lot of questions. We had some questions we weren't able to get to, so we want to make sure we answer those at the time we have left. Um, I am going to ask our operator just to come back and repeat it for us one more time, how to ask a question over the phone, um, and then we'll take some questions in the Q&A as well. Um, Robin? And thank you. Again, as a reminder, to ask a question, it is star followed by the number one. Please unmute your line and record your name clearly as prompted. Again, that will be star by the number one. If you will need to withdraw the question, it is star followed by the number two, and I'll be standing by for any questions. Great, thank you so much. So let's take a look here. It looks like we got a question. Where are the links to these? Uh, Jane, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, if you mean to the assignments or if you mean to like the publications, um, if you could just clarify in the chat, I'll be happy to answer. Um, take a look here. Um, let's see here. We're just trying to go through some of these questions. Um, and let me see, if you see any, please jump in. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure we get these all. Well, there were a couple I wrote down in the beginning. Great. Um, someone had asked about the education award and benefits that universities had. I'm not really sure what specifically you meant, but there are some universities who will match the Spiegel Award, which is pretty awesome. Um, and I believe you can find a list of those schools um, on the National Service website. Great, thank you. Uh, someone here asked, um, if I already finished my taxes before I started my service, do I need to revise it to include the couple of weeks of this to work? Um, so, Marissa, no. Um, if you're talking about, like, you already filed your taxes for 2016, then no, you're good to go. Um, because you didn't earn any income in 2016 from VISTA, then no, you don't need to do anything for that. Um, if you did need to make an update to your W-4 that's in the system, you can do that at any time. Um, but no, you should be good to go. Let's take a look here. 
Um, one thing I do want to just mention before we get into more questions, um, if you have not already done so, you need to submit your oath form to the VISTA Member Support Unit. Um, we talked about that on Monday, we swore you into service, and um, we need that oath form in order to pay you. Um, and by the poll results, it looks like a lot of you want to get paid, so please, um, please get that done so that we can pay you. Um, the instructions are on the oath form. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can send me an email, but make sure you get that in today. The deadline is today um, in order to get you activated for service. Um, take a look here. Anne, do you have any other questions you wrote down like so um, proactively? <laughs> no, but Emma asks, can we enroll in both online courses for the spring summer session, or can we only take one course at a time? You only can take one course at a time, I believe. You can only take one course, um, but you may be able to apply for it the second round um, if your service dates work out that way. So yeah, um, I appreciate the, uh, the enthusiasm for doing both. Um, someone here had, uh, there have been some questions here about the VAD worksheet and some of your assignments that are due on Sunday. If you have some questions about um, what, um, if you're struggling with it or if you have questions on what to look for, Definitely talk to your classroom facilitator. They may have already reached out to you, but you can also reach out to them on the classroom. Um, it'll be pretty easy to identify who they are because it'll say facilitator um, around their name. So um, follow up with them if you have questions specifically about the worksheet, if there's any questions or any of the other assignments. Uh, they're a great resource, and they're really going to be um, your captains for this PSO blend. So let's take a look here. So someone here said that they missed the OAS webinar due to a class. How should I go about this? You'll need to contact me. Um, so send me an email, jburch at cns.gov, and I can follow up with you. Leah asks, um, I have my fingerprint kit completed. Where am I sending it, or who should I give it to? Good job for getting your fingerprints <laughs> done. Um, you can send them to us at headquarters. Our address is 250 East. South, uh, East Street, East Street. <laughs> South First South. Off, sir, shouldn't they have gotten a label from their project? Yes, you should have gotten a label. Um, but if you haven't, actually send me an email, Leah, at vistafingerprint at cns.gov, and I can get you a label. All right, do you mind typing that into her just for she knows? Thank you. Um, so, uh, let's take a look here. Um, someone else had a question about their oath. Um, Diana, um, please, if, if you guys have any questions about the oath other than just turning it in, please send me an email um, and I'll follow up with you. So Thomas here asked, if you receive a living allowance payment on March 24th, will that be for one week of pay or two weeks of pay? Um, so Thomas, you're starting in the middle of a pay period It'll more than likely just be from Monday through Saturday of this week. So it'll be like for six days of pay is what you would receive on the 24th. Um, if not, if you don't receive it this week, you'll receive it on the 7th. So you'll receive a full 14 days plus those other six days um, is kind of what you're looking at. Um, let's take a look here. Um, do we have any questions over the phone? Yes, we do. We have one from Kaylin. Your line's reopened. All right. Hi, Kaylin. Hi. Good. Um, I just had a quick question regarding the oath form. Um, we did it at my, like, we did it at the agency, um, and our, like, manager or instructor that did it um, was going to, like, she scanned them over and was asked, and then she like put our emails in to say like, is this sufficient that she did this? Was it okay that she scanned it over versus like us as the VISTA member? But I haven't gotten a reply. So um, did you, were you like on the webinar and you got sworn in by us and then they just compiled all of the oaths? Yep, yes. So that should be fine. Um, for all of you guys who have questions about, hey, am I going to get um, confirmation that my oath was received? 
really, no news is good news. So um, okay. if you okay. don't hear from us about your oath, it means we have it. Okay. If you do, okay. we don't. I just want to make sure because I don't want there to be any issues. I appreciate that. I do appreciate your attention to detail there. So no worries. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So, um, sorry. yep, go ahead. And I'm sorry, no further questions from the phone lines. Okay, great. Uh, Uday, um, I apologize, like I said, if I'm saying that wrong, um, asked a question, is there a procedure for VISTA members to partition non-participating universities to match the education award? Uh, that's a big issue in our VISTA community, which is isolated from other communities. That is a great question. Um, there's not a, a formal uh, procedure for that, but you are your best advocate. So um, we recommend if there's a school that A, you've gone to or that you want to go to that we, that we don't show matches, talk to them. Just say, hey, I'm a VISTA member. I went here or I would love to go here. And this is the work that I'm doing as a VISTA member. And at the end of my service, I'm going to receive this great education award. Um, I want to know if your, you know, your department, your school overall, would be willing to match that in some way. Um, you know, we do great things for this community, and it would be a great thing uh, to show your support for AmeriCorps. Something like that, you know, draft it up um, for you and send it to them. Um, this question has been asked, so we'll definitely have to look internally to see if there's something we can give to you all to position your schools. There were a couple of questions about settling in fees. Hmm. You will um, receive your settling in relocation allowance and fingerprint subsidy um, with your first living allowance um, on April 7th. Great. So let's take a look here. So um, we have a question here. What is the link to find the assignments that are due Sunday? So um, those, uh, those assignments can be found on the VISTA classroom. So it's vistaclassroom.educationnorthwest.org. Uh, you've got the instructions on how to log in on Monday. And all of your field work assignments, your virtual meetups can be found there. So that's where you'll find all of it. So just make sure you log in and check them out. If you have any trouble logging in, you can contact uh, VISTA courses at educationnorthwest.org and they will assist you. Let's take a look. Um, another question here came in about um, the rent subsidy. Uh, we talked earlier about the rent subsidy. Um, that is something that your project, if they have elected to provide that to you, um, would would work out with you and your landlord directly. It's not something that, that we participate in. It's not something that we, uh, that we monitor in that sense. So you would want to talk to your supervisor and they would be able to kind of let you know what that process will look like. And there was a question here. My supervisor doesn't have my fingerprint kit. That's not good. <laughs> Send us an email at vistafingerprint at cns.gov. Great. So a question here said, going back to healthcare, if I had Medicaid in my home state and I want to register in my new state, do I need to end my home state uh, coverage in order to qualify in the new state? And is it right that I can use IMG coverage in the interim? So um, with regard to transferring Medicaid from one state to the other, I am not familiar on the regulations around um, whether you can stay on Medicaid until they can make a seamless transfer to your new state. That's something you'll want to talk to um, with your current Medicaid provider. So if you were in Texas and now you're moving to Virginia, talk to Texas and say, hey, I've moved to Virginia and I want to transfer this over. What do I need to do? Um, and then they should be able to assist you as well as looping in Virginia or whatever state you're at in that process. Um, the second part of that question, is it right that I can use IMG coverage in the interim? Um, so IMG doesn't necessarily provide coverage um, if, um, if you, if you have Medicaid right now, then, then yeah, you would get the health care allowance. You can elect to enroll in that, and that would cover, you know, while you're covered under that Medicaid. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like, sounds like you have coverage, so you should be able to do that health care allowance. Um, let's take a look. Um, another question here came in. Um, about um, about the webinar timing and live sessions and classes. Uh, when we talked about employment, we also talked about classes. 
you have a class that conflicts with one of the live sessions, unfortunately, you need to, you need to notify your professor that you're not going to be able to attend class that day. Um, Vista service has to take priority, so you should definitely work out with them how you can make up that, um, that portion of your coursework. Um, but you do need to be on the live Vista meetup sessions. Um, Robin, are there any questions on the phone? I'm sorry, no questions on the phone line at this time. All right. So let's take like two more questions here. Um, so Leah asked a uh, last healthcare question. Uh, does the healthcare allowance also cover vision and dental out of pocket costs, billing contact classes? Um, so Leah, yes. So if you have health insurance, but it doesn't maybe necessarily cover um, dental and vision, maybe you don't have those benefits on your insurance, you can still use the health care allowance to, um, to pay for, you know, contacts or your, uh, you know, annual vision exam, any of those kinds of things. You can definitely still use that. All right. So we're right almost at the top of the hour, so we're going to leave you with a thought here. Um, I want to first say thank you for joining us today, for being such great participants, and for going to be rocking this world of, of VISTA in, in your community. So thank you again. A um, few things to know. Um, your pay will be low. The conditions of your labor will often be difficult, but if you have the satisfaction of leading a great national effort, you will have the ultimate reward which comes to those who serve their nation and serve their fellow man. Lyndon Johnson, um, thank you all, have a wonderful day, and we'll hopefully talk to you soon. Bye.